Hi everyone, welcome back to the Jolo 3D channel. Today we're diving into how armor is made in the 3D world. This tutorial will be a bit long because I will show you the whole process of making commercial 3D products that are ready for sale. Let's begin. Step 1. Choosing a good reference. Let's start with a reference image generated by Adobe Firefly AI. At first glance, making this armor might seem difficult. You might wonder, how can I model this armor all at once? It looks too complicated. This thought arises because you're looking at the entire model at once. However, every model can be broken down into parts. For this armor, think of it in three parts, the base, the pattern, and the outer parts. Sometimes you can simplify it to just the basic shape and details. And remember, details can be added with texturing instead of modeling. Step 2. Exporting the character base for armor fitting. In Character Creator, CC3 or CC4, you can export the character as an OBJ file, which will serve as a base for modeling in Blender or ZBrush. Step 3. Modeling the armor in ZBrush. In ZBrush, import the character you exported from Character Creator. Click the Edit button to confirm the imported object. Hold Ctrl and select your strokes. I prefer using the lasso tool to draw the basic pattern and the freehand stroke to fine-tune the drawing. Instead of directly copying the AI-generated design, use it as concept art. When using the lasso tool to create the basic shape of the armor, you might notice the edges aren't solid due to low resolution. To improve this, increase the subdivision level of your base character under the Geometry tab. Now the edges are much clearer. Next, use the lasso stroke to draw the basic pattern and the freehand stroke to fine-tune it. Under the subtool menu, extract the drawn pattern, keeping the thickness as thin as possible. Go back to the base character and paint other parts. Extract the edge of the armor using the same method. To see it more clearly, turn off the visibility of the previously extracted patterns. Let me finish the armor first. Step 4. Simplifying the armor in ZBrush. Next, use Remesher to simplify the topology of the armor, making it easier to edit the edge loops and extract UVs. Remesher might take several attempts, so I'll speed up the process with a time lapse.
Step 5. Editing the armor in Blender. Import the base character and the armor parts created in ZBrush into Blender. Using Alt plus click, select the edge loop of the upper arm to create the armor base. After choosing the shape you want, press P to separate the selected part from the upper arm. Now we have three parts. Let's edit each part to optimize the topology. Delete the inner parts of the armor since they are always hidden. Use C for circle selection to highlight and delete the unwanted mesh. I'll speed up the editing process to save time. Combine the vertices and fill any gaps in the edge loop using F. To create a better edge loop, select the outer edge and extrude it. Select the edge loop where you want to cut the armor in half and use Ctrl plus E to mark the seam. This helps unwrap the 3D object into a 2D UV map, similar to how you'd cut a 3D object in the real world to flatten it on a table. The goal is to cut the 3D object into a blend of rectangular shapes, making it easier to use the UV squares function and achieve a perfect rectangle shape. Sometimes, edge loops might be spiral shaped and hard to cut. Connect any vertices between rows to complete a circular edge loop. I'll speed up the process to show you all the editing.
After unwrapping the UVs for all armor parts, tidy up your UV islands in the UV editing space. I highly recommend using the Blender Add-in UV Pack Master to speed up the process significantly. Now, let's export the combined armor for texturing. Step 6. Texturing the armor in Substance Painter. To keep things smooth and clear, I've already finished texturing my model. Here's my design. Let me disable all the layers and explain the texturing process step by step. For the base layer, I use the Smart Material Car Solid Paint as the overall base material. Then, I applied Metal Grid as the inner part of the armor. Next, I added another layer and used Alpha to create a glow pattern. I did this by selecting the base color, height, and emissive texture in the Properties Paint section. Then I chose the alpha and printed it onto the model. For the path painting section, I used path painting with a solid stroke and negative height to draw non-destructive lines on the model. To make sharp corners, simply add more points to the path. Lastly, I created some patterns that don't follow the UV pattern by selecting large areas of the mesh and erasing unwanted textures with my stylus pen. After finishing the textures, export all textures as ping files. Step 7. Finalizing in Character Creator 3 or 4. Create accessories in Character Creator 3 and import the combined armor from Blender. Adjust the position of the object if needed. Apply the ping files generated from Substance Painter to the Textures tab in the Modify panel in Character Creator.
Finally, use the transfer weight feature to finish weight painting. And there you have it, the final product is ready for sale. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you found it useful, please like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.